one day, my fate changed. You see, the reason my name is no longer Giovanni Gabriel Prasad Ferales, and it is now John Kevin Hines, because of two beautiful human beings, Patrick Hines and Deborah Hines. And on March 17, 1986, they adopted me and made me their son. They changed my name, but they made me their son. My ground was solid. My feet were rooted in. And then, like a Mack truck barreling down the road at 75 miles an hour, it hit me. The first symptom, extreme paranoia. Where the hell did that come from? Extreme paranoia. And after the paranoid delusions would come the manic behavior. My parents were in the middle of getting divorced at the time. Uh, it was a tumultuous time for my life as a teen. And I believed uh, that I was the only one under that cloud. But that's, that's so far from the truth. It's so far from fact. 50 million people around the world diagnosed mentally ill. Uh, so many more undiagnosed, but that had the diseases that are in their brains. I don't want to have this disease. I don't want to be flawed. Bipolar disorder, that's not me. I was a wrestling champion in the WCL League in, 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 in California. There's no way. My football team went to state, this is garbage. And I, I was in so much denial. And that denial ruled the day until I crashed hard. And it was September 24th when when it all came to a head. Trying to figure out what was going on in my brain, I, I, I looked online for ways to end my life. And I found them. And they told me, to live in San Francisco, go to the Golden Gate Bridge, jump off, you will die upon impact, good luck, exclamation point. I vividly remember writing my suicide note. People don't get it. Like, I, I thought I was a burden to everyone who loved me. Uh, because that's what my brain told me, because that's how powerful your brain is. I sat at my desk and I penned that note. Mom, dad, brother, sister, girlfriend, best friend. Love you, but I gotta go. I was gonna go to the Golden Gate and I was gonna disappear. I thought I was my family's burden. I wish I asked them. I just wanted the pain to stop. That's the common denominator of people we lose to suicide. They just want the pain to stop. What they don't realize is that their thoughts don't have to become their actions. Their thoughts don't have to take over. If you can recognize those thoughts as flawed and illogical, because suicide is an irrational state of mind. I got on the next bus. I sat in the very last seat in the middle row. We began to drive out to the Golden Gate Bridge. And that's when it hit me, the ambivalence. I realized I didn't want to die at all. I realized that I thought, I said, well, what are you doing, Kevin? Get off the bus. But then because of my illness and because of my brain's misaligned chemicals, I began to hear the voices. But these voices were loud and clear. And on that bus, they were screaming in my head, you must die. You must die, jump now. And so I'm sitting there and I'm crying my eyes out, hoping for one individual on this bus crowded with people to look at me and say, hey kid, are you okay? Hey kid, is something wrong? Can I help you to reach out, to touch me, to, to see my pain? But everyone was in their own little world. Now, it's not their responsibility to take care of me. It's not their personal interest to see if I'm okay. But I say to you now, the next time you see someone in obvious emotional distress, suffering and pain, and you don't know them from Adam, I beg of you to walk up to that person, look them in the eyes, do not turn away and say something to the effect of, are you okay? Is something wrong? Can I help? You could quite literally save a life in that moment. 
I, I was walking up to the bus driver hoping that he would see my pain. But I could not say it overtly. I could not tell him that I was in trouble. I could not make those sounds. And he looked at me. And in typical San Francisco Muni fashion, he said, come on, kid, get off the bus. I got to go. It's his job. He's got to go the rest of his route. I understood that. He's sad. A wave of emotion overcame me as I stepped down off of this bus. My feet heavy, my heart palpitating, waterfalls flowing out of my eyes, my eyes red. I walked forward. I thought, that's it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Come on. Everybody cared. Every one of my family members cared. Every single member of my friends cared. People I barely knew that were acquaintances would have cared. My brain wasn't allowing me to care. That irrational thought when dealing with someone who is contemplating suicide. I didn't want to die. I believed I had to. I got off the bus. I walked slowly down the walkway of the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, people rode by me, drove by me, walked by me, and a woman approached me, and she said, will you take my picture? She said thanks, and she walked away. It was that moment I just said, nobody cares. The reality was that everybody cared. I just couldn't see it. I ran forward, and using my two hands, I catapulted myself into free fall. I was not standing on any ledge be talked back. I was in free fall. And this is the important part. The very millisecond my hands and feet left that rail. The very, very moment I was in free fall. The only thoughts in my mind were, what have I just done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. I hit the water. It's a four second fall. The vacuum opened up and sucked me beneath the water about 70 to 80 feet. But then I opened my eyes. And now I'm drowning? I don't want to drown. It wasn't in my plan. And I really thought, well, why'd you jump in a giant body of water? I frantically moved in any direction. My legs were completely immobile. I had shattered my T12, L1, L2 lower vertebrae in the shards like glass. They splintered all throughout my lower body. My legs are mobile, only using my arms. I was going down. My ears were ringing. My eyes were bulging out of my head. I realized I was going down. I shot for what I thought was the surface. As fast as my arms would take me and I saw the lit water above me I could see my destination, and I thought, well, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it, you're gonna drown. I don't wanna drown. God, please save me, I don't wanna drown. God, please save me, I don't wanna drown. I made a mistake, the greatest mistake of my life. I broke the surface, barely made it. I bobbed up and down on the water, I swallowed some salt water, and I prayed, God, please save me, I don't wanna drown, I made a mistake over and over and over again. The voices were gone. The deep, dark depression that brought me to that day had disappeared. The only thing I wanted to do, needed to do, had to do, was survive. Uh, I was in the most physical pain I'd ever experienced. I have ever experienced. The Coast Guard was amazing. Uh, he was just so freaked out that I was alive that he just dove in and brought me on board. And I said, do you know how many people we pull out of this water that are already dead? And I said, no, and I don't want to know. The guy put his hand on my forehead and said, kid, you're a miracle. In the hospital, they restructured my back with metal. I walked again, as you can clearly see. And even though I didn't die, I caused people a great deal of grief and pain. Just the day of my attempt still sits within them today. I asked my father, if he still feared my death by suicide. He said, every time the phone goes off, 
His first inclination, is Kevin alive? I had that impact on my dad. In the hospital, I had to go from that point to a psychiatric unit. I went from sitting up hours of a day, then into a wheelchair, then to being able to move that wheelchair myself, then being using a walker, and then a cane and a back brace in a matter of weeks. Those doctors saved me. They saved my future. And I have learned today, I have learned very clearly that suicide is never nor should ever be the answer. And I can tell you that I will never attempt to take my own life again. I think about it often enough. I contemplate it all too often. It's part of my life. I have chronic thoughts of suicide. But I will not let them break me. Because I know the wake of destruction, it causes all of those in my path. I live, and my family is still in pain from what I did. It turns out, I was on a show a year later called Primetime Live with John Quinones. A guy called Morgan McWard writes into the show, and he goes, Kevin, I'm so very glad you're alive. I was standing less than two feet away from you when you jumped. Until this day, no one would tell me whether you lived or died. It's haunted me until right now. By the way, there was no shark, like you mentioned on the show, but there was a sea lion. And the people above looking down believed it to be keeping your body afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind you. Frankly, had she not had me take her pictures for those five minutes, the creature that came to my aid in the water, that kept me afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind me, would not have been in the location it was to save my life. Now I know that no matter what I'm faced with, I will defeat it. And suicide will never be the solution to my problem. It is the problem. I have chronic thoughts of suicide that plague me. They'll never, ever take me. There's no way I'm gonna take my life. I'm always gonna ask for help. I would have missed the love of my life, Margaret Hines marrying the woman of my dreams. I would have missed so much had I died by my hands or had I ever attempted to die again. I've been given the gift of a second chance. I'm grateful for every millisecond I get to walk this green earth. I wish I never jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, but here I am today to try to express to these kids that they have options and that they don't have to die, that they can thrive, but they gotta be here to get there in the first place. To anybody out there watching this right now, considering it, what do you want them to know? Stop, breathe. In four seconds, out eight. Do it 30 times, you lower your stress level, your panic, your anxiety, or your, your moment of, of pain. You deserve to be here, you are valuable, you are worthy, you matter, you matter to all of us, you matter to me. Suicide is not the solution to the problem, it is the problem, and we need to keep you here so you can be here tomorrow and every day after that. Stop, breathe. You got plenty of time to die. It doesn't have to be by your hands. That destroys everyone left behind, but don't feel guilty about it. You want to live because you deserve this life.